Hi folks, uh, I'm Louis Dion, I work at Apple on libc++ and I want to talk about something horrible called always inline. Uh, and so mm, some of you might have seen this code before, specifically I'm talking about the libcpp inline visibility macro. Um, so that macro actually decorates like 90% of the functions in libc++. Um, and um, I assume that most of you have debugged code using libc++. And the reality is that it's not really easy, right? So whenever you try to, well, first of all, the, you know, um, uh, the uh, code stepping is, is, is pretty awful, but also whenever you try to evaluate uh, an expression that uses a function marked with libcpp inline visibility, it doesn't work. Um, and the reason for that is, is, is this, um, is that libcpp inline visibility actually expands to two things, to visibility hidden, so it applies two attributes, visibility hidden, but also always inline, and that's bad. Um, there's a good reason uh, for uh, doing that. Uh, so on the one hand, we use hidden visibility to control what symbols uh, appear on the uh, ABI boundary of libc++. That's super important because um, we, we need to be uh, ABI stable. And so whenever we introduce a new symbol, it needs to be there forever. So we need to control, to, to mark most symbols as being hidden so they don't appear on the, the dialect boundary, right? Um, so that's for the hidden visibility attribute. What about always inline? Um, the, the purpose of that one actually is, is to control um, what symbols appear, in a way, at the translation unit boundary. Uh, what I mean by this is, is that it allows us to um, link together translation units that were built with different versions of libc++. Um, the problem here, is that if you uh, have inline functions, right, that are, in, uh, that are emitted in two different translation units, and then when you link them together, they get ODR deduplicated, right? If you built the two translation units with different headers, it is possible that the definition of the inline functions in each translation unit, unit is different. And so you're uh, basically having an ODR violation. So to, to make it possible to link together translation units that were built with different versions of libc++, um, we, um, we basically mark these functions as always inline, and so they're never emitted in translation units, and we just sidestep the problem completely, right? Um, and so that's helpful when you wanna uh, uh, distribute like static archives and things like that. And so we wanna resolve that problem, because always inline is not fun. And uh, so the way we're doing that is basically using the Clang attribute called uh, internal linkage. And uh, internal linkage basically marks the thing that it applies to as having internal linkage, right? Which is basically the C static keyword. And so um, with that fix, uh, uh, code stepping becomes much nicer and you can you know, finally evaluate expressions in the LLDB, which is good. Um, there's other nice benefits. Um, Doing this uh, is basically equivalent to outlining inside the translation unit because instead of always, um, instead of always, you know, inlining the function at the point of call, uh, you're only going to have one definition in the, in the translation unit, um, and and all you know the other users in the translation unit are going to refer to that one, unless the compiler decides to to inline it itself. And so um, there's roughly a 10% code size improvement by uh, doing that change for the uh, for libc++, you know, just the shared library itself. Um, it's, it depends highly on the uh, on how much you use the, li the standard library. So I'm not very proud of people working on the client front end. Um, you should use the standard library more. Uh, so unfortunately, uh, like I said, uh, there wasn't any benefit for Clang, uh, but uh, so it, it really depends on how much you use the standard library. Um, now, a lot of people actually don't care about uh, linking translation units built with different versions of libc++. That's kind of a pretty weird use case, actually. Um, and so in these cases, we can get rid of the internal linkage attribute as well. And the benefit is additional code size savings because then we can actually do the ODR deduplication across translation units, right? So inline functions basically get um, merged and there's only one definition that gets, uh, that, that, that is in the end executable. And um, so doing that actually requires uh, using a new Clang attribute called exclude from explicit instantiation. It's documented. It basically excludes something from um, an explicit instantiation. <laughs> and so um, we uh, rolled out part of, of this change in LLVM 7. Uh, the state of things in, in LLVM 7 is, is that we still provide the guarantee that you can link translation units built with different versions of, of libc++. That, that works. Um, by default, we still use always inline. 
But if you don't want to use always inline, you can define this ugly macro libcpp hide from ABI per TU, um, and then we're going to use internal linkage. Okay? And in LLVM 8, what we want to do is, by default, not provide that guarantee, because most people don't care about that. And, um, and then in that case, uh, always inline would never be used. And if you actually need the guarantee to turn the guarantee on, uh, then you can define the libcpp hide from ABI per TU macro. Uh, and, and that way you get the guarantee, but it's implemented using internal linkage, not always in line. So in that world, always in line is never used, and you can you know, either get the guarantee or not. That's it. 